Good morning, everyone. This is Financial Literacy 101. So as we were talking earlier this week about the federal government bringing this weed, the slash marijuana law to uh, the process through the House, through the Senate in order to be passed into law, you understand that the House is already ready to pass this because they did a research, by the way, or Pew Research, one of the most renowned research companies um, in the United States. And what they found out is that 91% of Americans who took this survey believe that marijuana should be legal for recreational and also medicinal use. So this is important for you guys who want to get in on low stocks. Now, some of the tribulations that this bill may come through is when it hits the Senate. The Senate is not looking to pass this. Now, um, we did be from the right side or the left side. I don't know. We understand that uh, through some time in history, through prohibition of alcohol, the one reason why the government did not pass or make alcohol legal from, from some time, they were trying to figure out how to tax it. They were trying to figure out how to make money from it. They already know how to make money from weed. The same way that these states are making money from marijuana through the dispensary, through store. Anyone who doesn't have a dispensary, anyone who doesn't have a marijuana license, a.k.a. a cannabis, a cannabis license, just as you have an alcohol license, you go to the alcohol uh, shop or store. So they're going to run this primarily the same way. So that's what we really need to look at now. As we see here, it says high expectation how the house is moving to legalize marijuana. Let's get into some details here. It says here, while most states have legalized it for recreational or medicinal purposes, it's still legal for a, it's still illegal on a federal level, but that could soon change. This week, the House of Representatives is expected to pass a bill that will decriminalize marijuana use on a federal level. This is a move that is overwhelmingly popular among Americans. An April 2021 poll from Pew Research found that 91% of U.S. adults think that marijuana should be legal, either medicinally, recreationally, or both at the federal level. Of course, it should be legal on both accounts, okay? It should be just like alcohol. If they're going to use alcohol in the hospital and clinic to clean your wounds, but then you can drink that same alcohol to kill your kidneys, I'm sorry, to get a buzz, <laughs> then we should be used the same way. Marijuana should be used the same exact way. Okay, that's just the way I look at it, ladies and gentlemen. But we'll talk about it right after this. All right, so marijuana legalization bill expected to pass the House, face roadblocks in the Senate, okay? That's your senators of your states that may block this, whether it be Republican or Democrat. I truly don't know, but um, let's look at some of the details here because I know a lot of you, just like myself early on, when Tilray first came out, I was one of the huge investors, and I got out right before Tilray dropped. It says, we stocks on the move this morning. Although the stock is up 30% over the last month, they're looking at to talk about Tilray in particular here. A lot of movement in the space among other weed stocks as well. Now, as you look to my right over here, ladies and gentlemen, you will see that um, MJ, the current stock that I'm talking about, that is the stock ticker, that is the stock symbol. It also known as ETFMG Alternative Harvest ETF. And that's up pretty good this week so far because we're still waiting for this to essentially get passed through the house. And we're going to look at some other legislation and how the process actually moves. So you guys understand, these are one of the major investments, whether you deal with marijuana products or not that you can get into. Okay. Because I would like to believe during the stock market, during prohibition time of alcohol, that those people who invested that alcohol would be passed because they understood how the government was going to tax it. They made buku tons of money. Basically, they made millions of dollars off investments prior to it being passed into law. Now, the downside to this is if it's not passed into law and you hold these stocks too long, you could lose a lot because what's going to happen as they know there's going to be passed through the house, everyone's going to start to invest, meaning that the stock is going to be pumped. 
But some of the worries here is that the Senate is not going to pass it. OK, and we're going to go through um, how they systematically take these things to law and pass it. And then we can see where some of the hiccups may be, some of the roadblocks, the pain points, et cetera. OK, now moving right along here. Let me I'm also going to show you some of the stocks that's involved with this particular one here. As we're looking at this one, family in the past year has been down almost 50 percent. OK, but in the past month, it's been up almost 20 percent. OK, the past week has been up nine and a half percent. And in the pre-market today, it looking like around two percent that is currently up. OK, and for you guys who are not familiar with MJ, MJ tracks a market cap weighted index of global firms engaged in the legal cultivation, production, marketing or distribution of cannabis cannabinoids or tobacco products this listed name for mj is the etf mg alternative harvest etf this um the inception date was back in 2015 we're going to tell you what's in the fund a lot of the stocks that are in this fund has to do with medicinal marijuana use that's in the healthcare department we also have the consumer defense the consumer cyclical the basic materials industrials and technology now i want to go over and show you what's actually inside of this stock okay so we have Tilray at 10%, Canopy Growth at 7.8, Sundial Growers. Now, some of these like Sundial Growers is in my portfolio. Um, I have another one I'll show you guys um, once we end here. But you see Grow Generation. That's the other one. Grow Generation, uh, Kronos, Aurora, or Organogram, WM Technology, High Tide. And these are the stocks with the highest percentage. There's actually 37 stocks dealing with marijuana in some sort of capacity in this particular ETF. So that's notable, okay? That's very, very notable for us to go over. Let's look at this again. Now, marijuana's biggest ETF missed the cannabis rebound, okay? Because we're looking at time where cannabis was really making headways because you understand that Canada is the one country on in the Northern Hemisphere, North America, on our continent, that legalized marijuana. The entire country of Canada legalized marijuana. So either you're going to go to the state or you're going to go to Canada. And that's probably why Washington State and Oregon uh, passed marijuana, the 420 law. That way they uh, decriminalized and made weed legal for medicinal and recreational use. So people can stop going to Canada, spending their money in Canada, but they can spend it right there in Washington and Oregon and Colorado and D.C., all these particular states. And we're going to go over that as well. I think that's very important. All right, here's some of the details. Open at $10.75. We see the 52 weeks range here, family, from $8.40 to $23.31. The net um, expense ratio, that's the operating cost of this particular ETF. Um, long as it's not 1%, is not considered high for most investors. So we're still under that 1% expense ratio, which is really, really good. As you see over the far less in that left column, you see that the dividends are only a measly seven cents. So again, I'm not going to be investing in this um, based upon dividends, but you guys may want to invest in this based upon the growth. And you have a wide spread. This is what you call diversification when you start to get into ETF. Me, because of the low numbers of marijuana and the skepticism behind it, that's why I went hard in on Sundial Growers. That's why I kind of went hard in on Grow Generation because I kind of wanted more skin in the game, so to speak, versus kind of being so diversified where I make pennies on a dollar. If I go hard on two particular stocks, I can make dollar on a dollar. Hopefully that makes sense to all of you. You see the headline story there back in November 22nd, 2021. Cannabis company High Tide eyes more acquisitions as CEO channel jeff bezos for e-commerce inspiration now high tide is one of the stock that's in mj's etf so be very aware of that be very cognizant of that because that could be important to your investments okay let's move along here of course um, i want to do a recap of some of the stocks now i kind of went over to zach to try to give you guys some ranking they're not really giving me good projection numbers to display for you guys the only thing I got from this is that the potential dividends could go up to 19 cents versus seven cents, which you've seen before. That's all what I got. Now, let's talk about how these things work in the government. So I'm taking an act that they kind of introduced back in 2021. And it is still sitting there. As you see, it was introduced January 19th of 2021. It says first is introduced 
Then it goes through the House. Then it has to be passed through the Senate. Then to the president, he has to sign off on it. Then it becomes law. So things like that we have to work for. And this is the same thing that was going to happen with this, with this particular stop. Okay. Let me go back here one second. I forgot where it was. Here we go. So I kind of want to show you how states are taking charge when it comes to legalized marijuana, legalized cannabis, whether it be for medical use or recreational use. Now, more times than that, if it's recreational use, it's been automatically used in the medical field in that state. For states who have adopted medical use only and with CBD, look for them to start legalizing recreational use because of the money. Everything boils down to money, okay? Because for a long time, California had medicinal use of marijuana, but people just would pretend like they were sick. Their homeboys or homegirls will hook them up and they will go to these dispensaries for medical use and smoke weed, smoke legal weed illegally, smoke legal weed illegally. Hopefully that makes sense. OK. And some of you guys throughout these all these other states that has legal, uh, excuse me, legal medical marijuana. You have some people that you could potentially get legal weed smoking illegally. <laughs> but I just kind of want to show you. Uh, the movement in the U.S. and how states are taking charge, okay, governors are taking charge of their states because even though we have the federal government and the state and local government, governors are like small presidents, okay, subsidiary presidents for their state. They have a lot of power. And as you can tell, the federal government has not passed marijuana into law, but a lot of these governors like, no, we're going to pass it. We can make money off of this. And guess what? People are smoking weed anyway. Right. You know, and then some states like uh, Washington and Oregon, they have decriminalized a lot of um, illegal drugs. I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think Washington state decriminalized cocaine or heroin or opioids or something like that. They, they decriminalized something because they're like, people are going to do it anyway. The only thing we're doing is over flooding our jails where some people just need help. OK, we're going to find some people and we're going to um, court order some people to go to rehab. So this is important to the whole industry when states are legalizing weed, because at the end of the day, the only thing that stops people from carrying weed on airlines, OK, because the airlines are directed under the federal government. So now you're flying. Take, for instance, from Washington uh to dc washington state to dc if it's federally legal then you can carry your marijuana just the way you carry your alcohol to the next state right you might have to go under the plane you're not there rolling up you know inside of the plane there's no smoking on planes but you can drink right because there's no um there's no vapors there's no film so to speak but you can start to transport marijuana okay a personal use they're going to have some sort of um, limited just the same way you have alcohol because even but you know alcohol you have a lot of leeway i remember coming back from i think it was jamaica and i bought some white hennessy i don't really like white hennessy i think it's just as horrible as regular hennessy but i know a lot of people like it and you can sell it like a hundred dollars a bottle if not more but i bought like six bottles now you're not going to be bringing six pounds of marijuana somewhere no, no, that's kind of like you now you're distributing the marijuana. But nonetheless, I digress. Let's go over this very, very quickly because I just kind of want to get you guys the information. So investments, because this is about money in the end. It doesn't matter, ladies and gentlemen, whether you are a user, investor or both. It's about money. And if you can get in on this, you ain't going to stop it. A lot of these states have already legalized marijuana. So let's look at this. So. The very dark green ones like New York have already made marijuana legal for recreational and medical use. OK, so anything you see dark green and we're going to do a quick overview. OK, we have Washington State, Oregon, California, Nevada, Arizona, Alaska, New Mexico, Colorado, Illinois, West, uh, excuse me, Virginia. Michigan, that's still part of Michigan, New York, Vermont, Maine, Massachusetts, Connecticut, New York, uh, what's this right here, D.C. as well, okay? Then you have some 
states that are kind of outliers where they say we're just going to do it for medicinal use. Uh, we know that it helps medical. So we don't want people just smoking marijuana, <laughs> you know, um, for medical use. You have North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, Utah, Oklahoma, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida. We got West Virginia, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New Hampshire, Rhode Island. So look for these states to now in the next year or two to make the medicinal recreational and medical use. Just look for it because this is a huge industry that you see all these states that are neighboring states that have legalized marijuana. Guess what you're going to do? You're going to go to. So if you live in North Dakota, you can go right next door to Montana and buy your uh, legal weed. And of course, they're going to tell you, hey, man, if you're going to cross the border. They're watching out for you guys. But some of you guys may stay over there and smoke it or you might just put it under your car engine. I don't know. Right. And, and put it back into Montana. But nonetheless, people are going to smoke it. OK, then you have the most two notorious states in the United States of America. They say, you know what? Marijuana is not legal on any account. It is illegal, period, for medical and recreational. And you have. States like Idaho, which, I mean, I, I've been to Idaho. I wouldn't want to live there. And Nebraska, <laughs> yuck. Now, for you guys who live in Nebraska and Idaho, you might love your states, but I've been there, done that. I wouldn't want to live there. Last but not least, you have CBD and low THC. Now, I walked into a smoke shop in Texas. And what I realized is that these smoke shops in Texas are utilizing a, a, a very gray area because when you go in there, they have weed. They say, hey, no, it's un we have a certain limit in Texas where you it has low THC where you can actually smoke. I said, wait a minute, it's not CBD. Like, no, it actually has THC. So look for states like Texas, Wyoming, Kansas, Iowa, Wisconsin, Indiana, Kentucky. Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia to at least start making marijuana of higher THC levels for medical use, right? That's kind of where it goes. They go, uh, we're just going to do CBD and low THC. Um, no, let's make it medical. Uh, let's just, let's make it recreational as well. Or they may come out very boldly and say, we're going to use it for medical and recreational. Nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's important for you guys to actually invest in stocks like this. So let's go back. We're looking at MJ, also known as the ETF MG Alternative Harvest. And now the market is live. You see that it's slightly down half percent. Let me go to my portfolio. I want to show you guys my portfolio. I see some people in a room. We got Therby Swag. Um, what you mean? What, what is the website? What website you're referring to? All right. So let's look at my past week here. My past week, I'm not doing too bad. Some of mine's, I've been all over the place with my investments here. I'm only up 2,500. Okay, let's look at here. I'm going to look at some of my marijuana-based stocks, okay? Now, I'm going to go to Grow Generation. Now, I've been losing a lot on Grow Generation, but this is what I call investor stubbornness, okay? Investor, you know how when writers and, and musicians and entertainers, they say they have writer's block? I have investor's block. On Grow Generation, I'm really waiting to recoup some of my money back. I have roughly around 45 shares. My average cost is around $29. And you see right here that I am down $851 at a negative 65%. And now marijuana stocks are taking off. I'm still waiting to get my damn money back, okay? So I'm going to hold what I got. Now, the problem with this is, I'm, there's no way I'm going to sell these stocks because I'm already down almost a thousand dollars. The best bet for me is to wait it out, wait till uh, medicinal and recreational stocks become very legalized. And last but not least, all of these stocks that I'm showing you, unfortunately, okay, unfortunately, these stocks are in uh, most of these are in Canada. Now, this particular one is in Colorado. Now, let me go back. I'm going to show you Sundial Growers, okay, which is another huge one. In my portfolio, I keep buying shares on. And I'm doing pretty good on this one. I'm doing pretty damn good on this one. Okay. 
So we see Sundown Gross is around 75 cents per share. Okay. I'm just going to show you in the past week here. In the past week, it's been up 22 and a half percent. You know why? Because the bill is going through the house and it's already uh, looking like it's going to pass. The only roadblocks we're looking is through the Senate. Hopefully, we can get some lobbyists to pass this bill. And again, the only reason why I'm saying I want this bill to be passed is from the financial aspect, from the investor standpoint. OK, I want to make some money and I want to recruit some of my money. OK, now I bought these shares around 73 cents. That's the average because I continue to buy them. They're around one percent of my portfolio and I'm up only around sixty three dollars, but I'm at 20 percent. I tell you, the money is in the percentages. So. What that tells me is I should invest a lot more money in Sundial Growers because even before this bill was going to go uh, be introduced to the house, it was still doing very, very well. OK, but my market value is only three hundred seventy five dollars. OK, uh, let's look at this a little bit. I bought some um, options here and you can see this was in Calgary, Alberta, which is Canada. So most of these stocks are from Canada. OK, exception with the uh, previous one I showed you. OK. I'm going to look at maybe one more stock here in my portfolio. Let me see. I thought I had one more. Give me a second here. Do, 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 do. Maybe I didn't. I thought I had one more. But there is one stock that is very expensive, but I believe all of you guys should invest. This is just my point of view, my, my opinion, that I believe you guys can really make some money in this, this stock right here. OK, I know you guys might have heard of this stock. It's called Triple Q. OK, Triple Q. And you're looking at the stock price. I know. But don't forget, with the new platforms I'm investing, you can just invest five dollars. And I'm going to show you I've been investing over time. I only have about a share and a half and I'm up around eighteen dollars at three point four six. Now. I'm going to come down. I'm going to um, show you the timeline of how the stock has been doing. The past year has been up 17%. The past three months, it's been down. The past month, it's been up. But this stock, over five-year period, give me a second here, over the five-year period, has been up 184%. These is kind of one of those stocks you consistently invest 25, 30 bucks every month, and you will start to see your money. Now, anytime you see... A projected timeline, a trajectory of a stock over the course of five years like this, it really it's really not deep analysis. Let me just get that straight. It's not really deep analysis. It's not really insight to a great forecast. But what it shows you is very plainly, it shows you consistency. It shows you that this stock over the course of time continues to go up. Now, we talk about what's um, the major components of the stock, we're looking at technology, consumer cyclical, uh, communication services, consumer defense, utilities, financial services, et cetera. And then some of the stocks that are held in here are some of the stocks that you guys are familiar with, like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Tesla, NVIDIA, Alphabet, which is Google, Meta, Flat, uh, Meta Platforms, which is Facebook, Broadcom, and Costco's. Everybody likes Costco's or Sam's Club. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you guys are learning some good information here on Financial Literacy 101. Please give this video a thumbs up. Share it on your social media so everyone gets the information. Because I know there's a lot of people out there that say, I'm just looking for stocks that I can get in at a low price point And they propel up. Now and again, today is Wednesday. It's supposed to be this week where they uh, introduce this bill. The House is going to vote on it, and then we'll find out. So today is hump day. It's Wednesday. I want you guys to be looking at you know certain news sources, primarily about the passing of marijuana on a federal level. Keep that in mind if you're going to invest. And again, a lot of you, you have the money to invest in stocks like Sundial Growers. Sundial Growers per share is $0.75. Cents before I go here, I'm going to show you one more time. I think it's important. I'm going to show you one more time. 74 cents right now. We know the market is live, so stocks go up and down like people's emotions. But again, it's only 75 cents a share. You guys have the money to invest. 
But I also want you to look at what's going on in the news, what's going on in the federal government, because you can get in. Say, for instance, you have five hundred dollars left over from your tax return. You get in, you make some good money, you get out. This one, you have to watch closely. This one, you might have to be a day or swing trader within these last couple of days here left in the week because after this pass, we're going to be looking for the next date for this to go through the Senate. During that time period, because it's not going to go through, the, go through the House, go through the Senate. No, it's going to go through the House. Then they're going to announce the next time that the Senate will be uh, voting on. During that time frame, you have a short window like this week to invest to start looking at profits. Then you have to start looking at trending analysis. You have to look at your RSIs, your relative strength index. You have to look at your movement averages, how many people are buying and selling the stock. But again, this is the opportunity not for you to earn, learn the basics and foundations of investing, but to make money while you're doing it. And believe me, when you start investing and you start making money, it becomes fun. And then sometimes it becomes addictive. But nonetheless, there you go. I see we have Alaska Skies. He says, where you are getting that information on which state is legalizing and which aren't? You can go over to... Uh, let me see here. I think Yahoo Finance has it. You can go to a Forbes. You can look up Forbes. Forbes have that information. And also, the only thing you have to do is do a quick Google search of what states legalize marijuana. You will see maps like this. That particular map was on Forbes. But another good website for you guys to track the information is called Marijuana Moment. Marijuana Moment is a really good site for you guys to track what's going on in the marijuana field, the marijuana industry, the marijuana sector of technology, and also laws that are being passed and decriminalized into law. You guys have a great and wonderful day. This is Financial Literacy 101. Learn money and be inspired. And you know how I do it every day, every Wednesday. Hump day!